Dialog, start date 625-2024. My name is Dan Javin, and on the screen here we have Baylock. Not Baylock. No, it's not Baylock. Is it uh, Grady, right? Nope, not Grady. Nope, it's Clint Howard as the Orion dealer from a uh, maybe a five-minute cameo. He had maybe less in an episode of Discovery you probably didn't see. But here, it's more Clint Howard for you right after. More James Cromwell, and oh, we're getting all the guest spots here. Um, this is the purple that's featured in the uh, in the pack in our... Uh, let me go to the time portal here and show you. We have an Orion pack. It uh, looks like we have one with a feeling feeling green pack, and then we also have the one just called Orion. I guess the placeholder name is going to stick here. Uh, kind of an, an interesting pack in that we have one non-portal crew featured here with Mistress of the Winter Constellations. Note on that also, uh, based on, on my best information I have, uh, our portal update is coming soon. It's actually, uh, I think it's due to be here in the next one, two, three weeks. So uh, this is being recorded on the 25th, Tuesday. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I think uh, best information I have is that we can look forward to the next portal update on uh, July 16th, that Tuesday. Uh, so elusive treasures and a portal update on that date. So mark it. Uh, you can hope that my prognostication has steered you right, but either way, Mistress will be entering the portal at that time, so even though it seems like an interesting include here, maybe uh, not not as valuable if you had planned to retrieve her uh, and, and she's on that schedule. So other than that, if you're also looking to finish the, the kind of difficult Orion collection as well, you might pick up a few stars on crew that you like here. I generally overall just don't like this pack very much, uh, and uh, speaking specifically about the, the Orion dealer crew, uh, you know, it certainly brings some collections to the table. Not dealer data, Orion dealer. Uh, so we have the Communicator, Gambler, and or of course the Orion, uh, and a little bit on the Discovery, uh, a little bit of a skill boost there. Uh, but this ship battle ability isn't particularly useful for the Captain Division, for your Purples, or for Fleet Boss Battles is completely, well, not completely, but but nearly useless. So I just, I, this is a hard pass for me, not too excited about Orion Dealer. Um, but there are some packs coming to the store very shortly. We just received some in-game notifications of a few different things that are going on today. Uh, so we have a uh, an incoming permanent Legends pack. So we've all received our Legends packs, our, our free drops that we've been able to obtain from StarTrekTimelines.com in the past. Uh, hopefully another one when it when it does hit uh, that we'll get another free copy. Uh, first hits free, folks. But uh, it's also worth it, too. This is a great pack. That's the uh, pack, if you don't remember, where you get a free big gold and two free purple beholds in addition to your seven other random pulls that all could trigger their own beholds if you get lucky. Uh, so it seems like a strict upgrade to the very old, very moldy premium pack. So I've mentioned before in other formats that the premium pack has just been devalued to the, you know, through, through the bottom of the floor. It's, it's such a random pack among such an enormous bloated uh, time portal it, that every time they give us new ones, it, it just doesn't seem like much of a reward. Having it be the ultimate community reward, the ultimate threshold reward in events, uh, I've, I've really honestly stopped pushing all the way to the end in a lot of events. If I don't have the time, it's not... It used to be a non-negotiable, right? You want to get all the honor, you want to get as many resources as you can in a free-to-play game uh, just to be able to push yourself further in mini-max, but the hours, and especially in a Galaxy event, the uh, the input in, in terms of your, your, your hoarded uh, uh, components, just and also the credits you have to spend just to build them, just really, really not worth it in a lot of cases. Um, so I've been passing on them. I think this is their their precursor. I, I feel like in the next few uh, few weeks or months, what we're going to see because they've got their test data right. They've already run this a couple of times. People uh, are opening and going out of their way to store.startrektimelines.com to pick up these free legends packs. So I feel like the the um, you know they 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 have gotten the impression that people like th these new packs, and I feel like this is probably going to be. Uh, what we see is the beginning of the replacement of the regular premium portal pack. Um, so looking forward to hopefully seeing an announcement that, hey, we're going to put a timer on the premium portal packs, burn them if you got them. Um, hopefully that'll be uh, after and not before the portal update that we see in, in hopefully as early as three weeks uh, so that people can at least wait till the portal update to open their packs and get some new crew as opposed to some, you know, some much older year old or more crew. Uh, we'll see what happens. This is all guesswork at this point, but this just seems like a very intentional decision, and I, I think it's long overdue. They've needed to do something about uh, the bloated portal for a very long time, and just giving us more pulls out of the same pack is, is a great solution. I agree with it. A little hard on the crew slots if you <laughs> if you get stuff that uh, you can't just add stars to, but, you know, it, it, that's the game, right? It's card collection and 
uh, being being merc merciless with your airlock. Um, so the other news update we got today was that the, there is a, a big issue with the schematics drop. So uh, those of us in the game, and actually, let me jump over to the game and show you. <laughs> I'll show you just how many schematics I have right now uh, for for the two featured crews. So in we talked yesterday about the. Uh, about the arena, so we were competing for the Serene Squall schematics. I did not mention, but also really, really important is the Borg Sphere 878 schematic. And you get a few drops off of your galaxy missions. This is a, a key uh, ship, not only for, for pushing the Captain Division rank, not the optimal ship there, but an excellent ship, uh, but also it's great for farming those uh, hard and brutal fleet boss battles as well. There are some fleets that cycle that four or more times a day, uh, the hard ba battles, and just get ridiculous honor, honor payouts. Um, we'll talk about that maybe another day, but for today I do want to focus on the issue that we have had communicated to us. There were uh, people who have collected their in-game mail uh, anytime between like 4 a.m. and probably noon today. Um, started seeing real real significant performance issues, and those performance issues were similar to what you usually see when you collect a mail. There's always a little bit of a beat of a pause, no matter what platform you use, where you'll collect an in-game mail, and then some sort of negotiation seems to be happening between your client and the server, and then uh, a few moments later you get your drop. Well, this seemed to happen uh, again and again and again after you collected your mail, to the point where uh, my inventory now for Serene Squall, so I've... <laughs> I've got all the uh, all the schematics I'll ever need. Uh, of course, I was able to max out my ship. So forget everything I said about not wanting to tank because you know just just wait for the glitch to happen, right? So we have no word yet on whether uh, Tilting Point is going to be making this right and rolling things back. I, I doubt it because it's a significant issue to, to have to do that. Yeah, I've got, I've got over 10,000 uh, sphere schematics. So for any of you that were fortunate enough to have collected your mail and uh, you know, been affected by this. Uh, you know, the payouts hopefully will be enough compensation for the performance issues you've seen today. Uh, one new development in the game today is that we do know the objective event, uh, and we usually get these objective events for the following week uh, that show up and start counting down uh, every Tuesday at noon. Uh, so here we see the Adventure Crew event. I'll give you a few notes on, on my strategy for this and hopefully it'll help you because this is a difficult one. Um, when objective events were announced, uh, the developers told us flat out they don't expect that everybody's going to be able to complete theirs. They're meant to be difficult. So let's look at the first one. Level up a crew. Super easy. All you got to do is just do it 100 times, bring a crew from uh, level 1 to 100, and then, well, I guess you can't really do that. That would be 99 levels. So you got to find somebody else to put a level on. It's a little bit strange, but all the same, that's the easiest. And then what really takes some planning here is the fusion. You fuse six crew and the immortalization, immortalize three crew. Um, fortunately, we're at the end of the Mega. For any of those, uh, any of you that planned to put a star on Displaced Boimler, our Mega crew, um, you probably want to hold off uh, until this pops up the following Tuesday, unless you're really thinking about pushing rank in the faction event and need that, that crew to be immortalized. Um, I would probably recommend, uh, you know, if you've already put your star on your existing Boimler, save your drop that you get from the event and just wait until Tuesday uh, so that you get your, your full fusion. Uh, it'll count as one of the ticks for Fuse Crew, and then also you'll get your immortalization tick. Super easy way. You don't have to worry about you know coming up with the right amount of quantum on the spot to be able to finish a fuse. And um, you know that it's a good start here. The other thing about the events is that there's always a couple of purples we can earn. Now, faction full factions are tough. We've talked before about how uh, for full factions, you're, there's no community rewards. So as far as your threshold rewards go, if you can uh, make it all the way up to 120,000. We're going to get our third copy of Ensign Kirk, but you're going to need a purple site or you're going to need to buy in with Dilithium into the event packs to be able to finish them off naturally. Um, so there, you're pretty close there. If you need what he's bringing in, from, in terms of collections, um, you know, he's, he's a decent collection crew for a purple. If you just want to finish and freeze him, uh, again, you know, for the event, it may seem great to throw him on a shuttle and have him at full strength. Uh, and if it really makes the difference for you, you know, you might want to get them out of the way ahead of time, so long as you have a contingency plan and somebody else that you can fully fuse. Uh, and then here for the rewards, too. If you can make at least uh, the, the top 2,000, you're going to get four copies of Triple Bashir, 1701 Bashir. Um, and so if you have no copies of him, if you didn't play in his original event like three years ago, and if you, um, you know, just haven't ever picked an extra one up from Beholds or from Voyages, um, start from scratch. Make sure you rank to, to top 2,000. Not too difficult to do in faction events. And so, you know, get your four copies. But most of us are going to have at least one copy laying around if we haven't already frozen him. Um, but what to do if, if we, we can't even manage that? If we're maybe a new account, maybe we haven't even unlocked our, our, second two, uh, our third and fourth shuttle base. Uh, it's just difficult in general for a new or even a mid 
range uh, account to really participate in faction events because it's such a drain on crew. If you're flying voyages, which you should be, uh, but then you're already asked to, then you're also asked to put uh, 12 or 13 crew on shuttles and fly them continuously. Uh, it, it's going to be very difficult for you. So here's a great way for players of all levels to really take advantage of uh, just basic crew that drops. So uh, what I'm going to show you here is you can always go into the time portal and you should have some basic rewards saved up. You're going to get five for free from playing in the faction event. So hold on to those, save, save those. Um, and then if you get any premium rewards, certainly that's an option. But I like the basic rewards better for this event and I'll show you why. When you open these up, you're going to get not only a whole bunch of green crew. Uh, green crew are great for the fusion portion. If you can double them up and match them, uh, you're going to wind up getting, you know, hopefully just a bunch of crew you can uh, not only freeze but then throw away and then also you get these gray crew here these are excellent for the immortalization portion uh, ensign kim in particular is actually one of my favorites i'll show you in a second i've got his page pulled up uh, but these common crew are super cheap to immortalize it's going to be a strain on trainers for early accounts but early accounts you're also going to be looking forward to getting those first few collection ticks and these old crew actually are, are doing pretty good in, in terms of getting uh, traits as the new uh, as the trade audits happen but also as new traits drop in the game uh, so you're going to have to do it eventually. You may as well do it during the objective event, get a little extra bonus. Um, so anyways, we've got these crew now. We haven't been dismissing as we go along because we want to hold on to them in our holding tank. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom here and notice I'm overflowing now. I'm at uh, six over my maximum crew slots. Um, they can sit here. Look at the countdown on this. They can sit here for a full week. Well, fortunately, the objective event isn't going to come around uh, until uh, a little less than that seven days. So we can keep any crew that we earn today and for from our voyages, from opening packs, uh, for the entire next uh, next week. We can just start accumulating crew. And this can go, the sky's the limit. You can go 100, 200, 500 in overflow. Uh, and then at the end of your uh, your time, when you're forced to, for the objective event, start fusing and, and immortalizing these crew, then just do that for the ones you want. Uh, make some room and, and just airlock the rest. So you can start airlocking the ones. Maybe I, I didn't get a second copy of, uh, of Robe Spock here, so just get rid of them. And then for the ones I do want to immortalize and fuse up, I could just fuse them super easy, just make a little room in my roster. Uh, airlock somebody, freeze somebody, take some of my immortalized stuff, freeze them temporarily, you can bring them back out later. Uh, and then for the other crew, the reason why I like to have immortalized uh, some extra immortalizations, even if I've already frozen, like Enzo and Kim, is these achievements up here too. So uh, this is a, an old tip from Reddit that you may have picked up. Uh, but there's a, there's a way to earn well over 10,000 dilithium just for immortalizing crew members. So the maximum here is 600. I've already hit that. But if you've, in, over the course of your entire game, including duplicates or anybody that you've, uh, you're, you've frozen, if you've immortalized fewer than 600, you're going to get another dilithium drop uh, for every, I think, 25 crew that you immortalize. So this is a great opportunity to get some ticks on that. Uh, so jump one, one more time over to, uh, actually we're going to go to data core now. And I'm going to show you some, my three favorite common crew. Um, so these crew here, Yemen Rand is probably my number one. And then tied for second place are Ensign Chapel and Ensign Kim. Um, the reason why these are my favorite grays to freeze extra copies of, I, I think I have... I think I have 23 copies of Yeoman Rand because I was farming that uh, that achievement I showed you. Uh, let's take a look here. If you scroll down a bit, there's an equipment builds uh, section here, and this actually shows you the cost to uh, to fully equip a crew, uh, also the cost in chronotons, an average cost, and then how many faction only items required. Uh, and for this crew here, uh, I think the most difficult parts I recall these Starfleet uniforms. You probably have to run a few missions to get these, but they drop pretty prolifically. Uh, and then the rest of this is a super easy build. Just nothing here you really need to go out of your way for. A lot of these drop as you're solving your galaxy mission, so it's a great one for uh, a great crew for early game uh, players to farm. And then looking at the other two recommendations I have for you, Ensign Chapel here, slightly more difficult but a real similar cost, so almost exactly the same as Yeoman Rand in terms of chronoton and build cost. And then finally Ensign Kim here. If you're looking to fuse up crew, just pull a bunch of those basic packs. You'll get the honor out of the crew anyways. It'll just take a week for you to get them, but always great to start pre-farming for the honor sale. Uh, and then, you know, use your greens for your fusion part of the event, and then use your, your grays if uh, for the uh, immortalization part of the event. And that's all if you just don't have anything else better to do. You know, the golds, the purples, if you're going to finish and freeze them, go, go ahead and do it. It's going to cost the same number of trainers anyways. Um, probably a lot more credits, but if you're looking to do it at a budget, this is the best way I can recommend. Um, so that's preparing for that event. I think that's all I have for you today, so we'll talk again tomorrow. Thank you. Live long and prosper.